First at four, police call it a sad chain of events. We just learned about charges linked to the death of a pregnant woman hit by a car. But it's not the driver who's been charged. A troubled state lawmaker admits he violated his probation. What he did and why he says he did it. And what comes next? Here's Paul. Yeah, hey, Karen, as expected, as promised, another 90-degree day here in Detroit. And adding insult to injury, it's going to get steamier tonight as we have more humid air coming in. And then we got to talk about rain chances. All that straight ahead. Wanted Michigan blowhards. Good. Slow down. Good. To help break a world record. I'll show you how you can get involved. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. That breaking news comes in the case of a pregnant woman who was hit by a car and killed. There are charges, but not against the driver. Prosecutors are charging the boyfriend of 27-year-old Tiara Bianca Jones. He's also the father of their baby. She was hit Sunday afternoon in the parking lot of the Country Court Apartments on Greenfield off of 696 in Southfield. Now, police say there was an argument and accused Joan's boyfriend of firing a gun at the driver of the car that eventually struck the mother to be. Investigators say there was no evidence that driver intended to hit Jones, and it was the use of the gun that sparked a sad chain of events. Guns will get you in more trouble than it will ever get you out of. And this is just another example of that introducing a gun into this scenario. And again, that unfortunate chain of events once that gun was introduced, causing the loss of the life of a mother. Uh, so again, very, very troubling. Police shared the mugshot of the suspect. He's facing a few charges, including assault with a dangerous weapon and a few weapons charges. The baby survived, and police say the little boy is doing well. Also breaking this afternoon, a federal judge has ordered a retrial for two men accused of plotting to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer. The Detroit News reporting attorneys for Barry Croft and Adam Fox argued there's insufficient evidence to convict them of kidnapping, conspiracy, or agreeing to use a weapon of mass destruction. Well, the judge in Grand Rapids disagreed, reportedly saying a rationale jury should and could still rule against them. The judge said he'd like to start a new trial as soon as possible. Again, he said could. Troubled state lawmaker Joel Jones avoids more time behind bars, but he's in rehab this afternoon after this new court hearing. Prosecutors say the state rep from Inkster tested positive for alcohol back on June 1st. He's not supposed to drink or use drugs for two years as part of a plea deal connected to a drunk driving arrest. Today, he pleaded guilty to violating his probation. The judge sentenced him to 30 days in jail, but agreed to let him serve that time in a rehab facility. Jones says he drank because of the death of his grandmother and is still working to turn his life around. Former Michigan Governor Rick Snyder pleaded the fifth and refused to answer questions in federal court today during a civil case connected to the Flint water crisis. Our cameras caught Snyder leaving court. He was scheduled to testify in a suit against two engineering companies who did consulting work for Flint. Snyder was called as a witness two days after the Michigan Supreme Court in a separate case said criminal indictments against him and others were invalid. Those charges were sent back to a lower court. All right, let's take a minute to focus on our first forecast. It's been warming up and we've hit 90 degrees again. It is a hot one. Bright blue skies out there. Let's send it over to meteorologist Paul Gross. Yeah, hey, Karen, and we have, as you said, hit 90, 90 in the city of Detroit at City Airport, 92 at Taylor, 91 over at Metro, 90 in Livonia, West Bloomfield, Troy. Oh, man, Windsor, you're at 32 Celsius. That is 90 degrees on the button as well. In our south zone, 90 at Monroe, even on the water, 90 there, 90 in Lamberville, 88, Celine and Deerfield. Up in our uh, west zone here, you can see 86 right now in Milford, 87 in Howell, near 90 degrees there in Manchester. And in our north zone, we're still in the upper 80s as well. No help from Lake Huron today. And in fact, 32 Celsius at Sarnia, that's also 90 degrees. We do have a cold front to the northwest. So we're going to come back in about 10 minutes and talk about the implications for our Friday rain chances. But for this evening, just balmy with uh, dry conditions. So a great evening ahead. But again, we'll be back to talk about that Friday rain chance in just a few minutes, Karen. The massive search for a murder suspect who grew up in Livonia has come to an end 
down in Costa Rica. The hunt for Caitlin Marie Armstrong started after a professional cyclist was murdered in Austin, Texas. Investigators say the victim, Anna Mariah Wilson, had previously dated Armstrong's boyfriend, another professional cyclist. He has been cooperating with the investigation. The U.S. Marshal Service says Armstrong was arrested yesterday at a hostel in Costa Rica. She should be returned to the U.S. to face a murder charge. It's been a historic day for the Supreme Court. You will see the celebration of the newest justice in a moment. But first, the current court ruled today the Biden administration properly ended a Trump immigration rule known as the Remain in Mexico policy. That 5-4 ruling is seen as a victory for the Biden administration. The court's conservative majority also handed Biden a setback as it ruled the Clean Air Act does not give the EPA authority to regulate greenhouse emissions from power plants. The court also refused to take up a case challenging a COVID-19 vaccine requirement for health care workers in New York that does not include exemptions for religious reasons. Now, following those rulings, this woman broke another barrier when she became the first black woman to serve on the highest court in the land. She's been Justice Kentanju Brown Jackson for about four hours now. Kimberly Gill joining us in the newsroom. It's a big change. It definitely is going to uh, affect so many people as she is in this position, Kim. Karen, hi, good afternoon. As you said, for the first time, four women are serving on the court at the same time. J Jackson joins Justices Sonia Sotomayor, Elena Kagan, and Amy Coney Barrett. Here's part of the historic moment we showed you live during Local 4 News at noon today. I, Katanji Brown Jackson, do solemnly swear. I, Katanji Brown Jackson, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That is Chief Justice John Roberts administering the constitutional oath of office. That was followed by the judicial oath of office with retiring Justice Stephen Breyer. Jackson, of course, is replacing Breyer on the bench. Since both are seen as falling on the liberal side of the court, the balance of power remains six to three. The more conservative wing has the big majority that we've seen in recent blockbuster rulings like the decision to overturn Roe versus Wade. Justice Jackson will get to work immediately, although there will be another formal investiture ceremony in the fall after the summer recess. The new justice released a statement uh, saying in part, quote, I am truly grateful to be part of the promise of our great nation. We'll have more reaction to this historic moment when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. For now, though, Karen, we'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, we appreciate it. Thank sure. you, Kim. Well, it is delicate, beautiful work, and it could bring a whole new world record to Metro Detroit. We just learned about this mammoth effort to do something pretty special, but it's going to take a village to make it happen. Paula Tuttman joins us now from a place called the Glass Academy to show us efforts to put Dearborn, Michigan on the map. Paula, look at you go. Okay, Karen, so... <laughs> All right, so I'm going to set myself up because I've been called a big blowhard, but who hasn't? And a whole lot of people are big blowhards, but this is finesse, and we need more of you to help us break this record. Keep going, give it everything you got. The place, Glass Academy in Dearborn, where starting and setting a new world record is underway. This is a sketch of the final product, an art glass installation, eight feet tall, eight feet wide, but the canvas, the breath of Michigan glass air bubbles blown by Michiganders and the Academy has six weeks to blow and collect 1,000 bubbles. Go for it. There you go. Okay, so here's the final goal to win over judges for the Guinness Book of World Records. This is where it's a community project. We want to win a world record. So we've asked all our students and our, our fans to come in and help us blow a thousand bubbles. And here's how it gets done. So I've shaped it. Now I'm going to start the bubble. All right, that looks like about the right size. Anyone more than 16 years old books a session at the Academy. They learn how to blow and actually blow and see the bubbles they will leave behind for the installation. We do 14 people at a time and it's really fun because it's super community based. 
Like people won't know each other by the time they leave. They're exchanging numbers. Now it's $25, which helps to pay for the materials, but also supports great nonprofits like Buy Michigan Now. If you come in and you choose Buy Michigan Now as one of the ones you want to support, $5 of your fee if you take a class goes to help support the work that we do, and we year-round try to promote Michigan-based businesses and Michigan-made products. And then on July 31st, the public is invited because here comes the judges. The Academy is already 81 bubbles in. Keep turning in with me. Light up. Oh. Oh, no. That's okay. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Good. Keep it coming. Okay, slow down. A little bit more. Beautiful. Perfect. That's the way we do it. Okay, with mine, make that 83 bubbles in. Now, only 917 glass air bubbles to go. The idea that a bunch of Michiganders can come together to create some art, let alone that it can set a world record, fantastic. How do you not want to be a part of that? Just whenever you're ready. Okay, so right here, so this is where I tap it? Yep. Just like that? Yeah. Woo! Opa! Oh. Okay, and nobody got burned, and I get to play with fire. Hit it hard. So again, uh, Glass Academy in Dearborn, you gotta contact them because time's already running out. How's that? How does that look? That looks Time perfect. is already running out and they need a game. Michigan Blowhards, unite! So that we can help break a world record. And yes, I did that. Right. Yes, I did that. Karen, <laughs> back to you. Well, yes, I did that. That was super cool. That really was. I love a lively live shot. Quick question. Do you feel lightheaded after doing that? And do you think kids can do it? Is there enough air in their lungs to make one of those bubbles? Oh, great question. No. Well, yes, I have enough air, but you have to be at least 16 okay. years old. And then you need to be accompanied by an adult. But once you're an adult, come on, bring it. Bring it. it. Love it, love it, love it. Paula, you always <laughs> deliver. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. <laughs>